hi I'm back it's been a little while but I'm gonna start making the videos again so today we are doing chapter 10 part 1 and part 2 this part will be quite boring because it's mostly just going through a bunch of rules um, but the next video will be a little bit more informative. So the first thing we have to go through is what is an antiderivative? When you derive, you go from f of x to f prime of x to f double prime of x. I forgot what that's called. Um, but when you antiderive, you go the opposite way. And this can also be called integration. So how do you actually do this? So I'm going to show it through an example. So when you derive, if f of x is x squared, then the derivative would be 2x. This is because um, the pattern goes n, which is the power, times x to the power of n minus 1. So in this case, you would do 2 times x to the power of 2 minus 1, which is just 1, which then equals 2x. Now, if we're going in the opposite direction, then the um, f of x would be 2x, and the notation for integration is basically using a capital F, so the capital F of x would be x to the power of 2. Now, this is because instead of the other pattern, now we're doing the opposite. You do 1 divided by n plus 1 times x to the power of n plus 1. Now, the reason you do this is because if you add one power to the x, the coefficient still needs to be correct. So that's why you have the 1 divided by n plus 1. You do this no matter what. So it's, for instance, here, what I've written here is if it were just without the 2x, if, if f of x was just x, you would do 1 divided by 1 plus 1, um, x to the power of 2, which would be a half times x to the power of 2. However, there is a 2 in front of that. So you just times the 2 by the half, which a half times 2 equals 1 which means, woo, the answer is just x squared. Now, if you want to double check your answer, you can just derive whatever you get. And obviously, when you derive two, uh, to the power of 2, you get 2x. So that's how you check that. Now we're going to get into the boring part, which is just all of the rules. So a very quick rule here is that this is for indefinite integrals. Um, or antiderivatives, essentially meaning that the c is not defined, which means in all cases you add a plus c at the end, because you don't know what the potential coefficient could have been. So in the example I just did, I actually didn't do it 100% correct, because I should have added a plus c. It's super important, always add a plus c for indefinite. Unless they give you a boundary, then you can find c, but you know, obviously, in this case, you can't, so. Now, let's get into the first rule. The first rule is just the power rule, so if you have uh, the derivative of x to the power of n, n could be anything, then the way you find that is 1 divided by n plus 1 times x to the power of n plus 1 plus c, as long as n does not equal negative 1. And uh, now you might be wondering what the s and the dx is. That's just the notation. So whatever's in between the like weird s shape and the dx is like what you are finding the integral of. Now the next rule is if you have a coefficient times f of x. Essentially what you do is you just do the, the f of x. So you do the thing you did above, 1 divided by m plus 1 times x to the power of m plus 1, and then you just times the k on the outside. So you don't, you do nothing to the k, okay? It's just, you, you do the x part, and then you times it by the k, plus c, of course. So the next one is if you have um, to find the antiderivative of f of x plus or minus g of x. So that would mean if I had x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3, you know, 
if I had to find the antiderivative of that. So this is actually super simple. You just find the antiderivative of f of x, and then you just minus it to the antiderivative of g of x. So you do them separately, if that makes any sense. You just do all of the, the, the terms or whatever you want to call it. You do the f of x, then you do the g of x, and that's that. Now, if you only have a coefficient, you have to add an x. So basically, it just becomes kx plus c. This is because um, if you derive and you have um, 7x, the derivative would just be 7. So if you're going the other way around, you just have to add an x. So if you have just a coefficient, so just a number, if it's like 2 or 5 or whatever, then you add an x plus c. Now, another rule is if you have 1 divided by x, then you do the ln x plus c. So remember, 1 divided by x equals ln x. Or if it's like 2 divided by x, then, you know, 2 ln x. Um, now, um, as you can remember from previous chapters, e is weird, okay? e just stays the same always. So if you have e of x, then it just equals e of x plus c. So that's pretty simple. That's good. But now we're going to get into the rules when you have um, multiple terms. Well, I mean, we already did one with multiple terms, but what I mean is when you have, um, like, in brackets or, you know, and such. <laughs> so for this bracket, if it's ax plus b to the power of n, you basically do the same thing you would do for x. Uh, like, it follows the same pattern, but you have to, like, take in consideration the bracket. So what you do is 1 divided by a, a being the thing in front of the x, times n, which is the power, plus 1, times the thing that's in the bracket, unchanged, and then to the power of n plus 1, plus c, of course. Now... We only have two more, so just hang in there. <laughs> It'll be fine. So the next one is if you have e to the power of ax plus b. So as you know, e is weird, and it always like stays in its weird place. But because the power is ax plus b, you do 1 divided by a... times e to the power of ax plus b. These are all things you're going to have to memorize. I think some of them are on the formula sheet, but a lot of it is probably not. Then again, if you remember how to derive, you can just like reverse, you know, and then you should get the rule for this. So now if you have 1 divided by ax plus b, then you do 1 divided by a times ln whatever's in the brackets plus c. And yeah, those are basically all the rules. You're probably going to have to like rewind this part of the video and like look at them again. Yeah, it's really annoying. You just memorize them. That's pretty much it. So the last thing for 10.2 is basically if you want to find c, in an indefinite integral. So basically, a definite integral is when they give you a range. If they say, like, um, it's in between when x is 3 and x is negative 1. But in, an indefinite is when they don't give you the range. And we'll talk about indefinite integrals in the next video. So essentially, if you have f prime of x, but you want to find f of x, uh, and you want to find the c of f of x. So now we have to integrate to go up, you know, because it's usually f of x to f dash of x, but now we're doing f dash of x to, or prime, sorry, to f of x. So, now you have to remember the rule. So what it was, was 1 divided by a times n plus 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3, yeah, uh, times the thing that's in the bracket unchanged, to the power of n plus 1, which is 3, plus c. 
So great, now you have the indefinite integral. However, if they give you a boundary, for instance, they say fx, uh, I mean f of 9 equals 3, which means that when the x's are 9, the answer is 3, then you can find c, because then you don't have any x's, which means you only have one unknown variable, and it'll be easy to find. Okay, so what you do is you put the 3, what it equals, yeah, equals to 1 divided by um, 6 times 2 times, it's not supposed to be a 3, it's supposed to be a 9, because you're supposed to put, plug in what the x value was, with where the x's are, obviously. So 2 times 9 plus 4 to the power of 3 plus c. And now you just do, you know, basic solving and, and equation. So uh, you move the 1 divided by 6 over to the other side, which makes it 18 equals 2 times 9 is 18 plus 4. 18 plus 4 is 22, so 22 to the power of 3. I am too lazy to actually figure out what 22 to the power of 3 is, so I'm just going to leave it um, where it is, but I think you get what I'm saying. So essentially, yep, that's basically what it is. I'm just going to leave it with with the C equals something, but obviously if you are on a test, actually figure out what the number is. Don't just like leave it at a certain point, because you know, they want to know what C is, not what C might be, you know? So, yeah. So whatever 18 minus 22 to the power I mean cubed, 22 cubed, so whatever that is, is C. Now, again, if I were better, I would just like use a calculator, but I, I can't be bothered right now, so <laughs> that's just life. So that was it for 10.1 and 10.2. Goodbye. I hope you learned something. I know this video is a little boring. The next one will be a lot more informative. You can uh, follow me at Johanna Fernert if you want. You can subscribe, like, and comment. Okay, goodbye.